It's season 49 and war number one, and we're gonna start on path four with a champion I'm very used to using at this point, and that is Black Widow Clairvoyant. And Black Widow is going to absolutely annihilate this war. This is probably the biggest Black Widow war I've ever had, and it's already at the start of the season. And she's freshly ascended because I took her, or I ascended her after Act 8 in preparation for this season. And the reason for that is, while I don't think I'm ever using Claire outside of War, I want to go Deathless this season. Because now I know I can do it. Because I, before this war started, I got 7 Deathless Wars in a row. And 7 is basically the same as 12. So, um, that means I'm going to go Deathless this season no matter what. And if an Ascended Claire is what I need for that, then I'm doing it. Because I get Claire assigned constantly, so I will take the extra attack and health. And we're going to start against this CGR here, a fight that I've gotten very used to. I took it a couple times last season. And while it is kind of difficult sometimes, um, I know exactly what I need to do to not die, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, the only thing I need to make sure to not do is let him throw a special attack when I don't have buff immunity active, or make sure he doesn't charge a heavy. I need to do one of those things, and there he actually could have thrown a special attack like a couple of seconds ago before I threw that SP2, but luckily he didn't. I would have taken some degen damage, and I would have come very close to dying if that did happen, so... Uh, you can definitely tell it's been three weeks since I've played War because I should not have given him even the chance to throw that special there. That was a big stupid mistake. Luckily he didn't throw it, so I wouldn't, wasn't going to take any damage. So Next up is Void on node 13, and this is a relatively easy fight for Elsa. Um, just because she kills him before he can kill me, and that's literally the strategy for this fight because you need someone who's going to get rid of that heal block at the start of the fight, and you need someone who's going to kill fast, or else Void is just going to completely destroy you. Uh, luckily, Elsa kills fast and gets rid of the heal block, so we're just purifying constantly, we're gaining so many precision buffs, and we're just critting with yellow numbers and red numbers to just completely annihilate him. 23 second fight, like, super easy. Um, and I was actually slightly worried about that, but I kind of doubted how good Elsa's damage is, because it is legitimately ridiculous. Um, so. Alright, next up is Anti-Venom versus this Mephisto on Node 26. This is simply a diversity placement, however, Anti-Venom, um, or I guess Mephisto, is somewhat difficult to fight against sometimes when you don't have a torch like I do. Um, but I still got to sign this fight, and I was going to use Anti-Venom, who just kind of destroys him, so it's not that big a deal. Um, we're going for a spam SP1 rotation, just to keep Petrify up and let him kill himself with willpower. And I did make a mistake there running into his SP1. I thought that um, I thought that I might be able to Tigra-esque the fight where I get closer before I go for the counter. Um, but I couldn't, so that was unfortunate. But at the same time, we're fine. Anti-Venom is just going to heal most of the damage I take for the rest of the fight. Um, we're just going to block special attacks, which is going to give us more power and heal a lot of the damage back. So we don't really need to worry about taking block damage. However, at this point in the fight, he gets extremely passive, and I have to bait this special out, and he just does not feel like throwing it. And I really don't want to hit his block, risk the chance of him going to into an Aura. Luckily, he finally throws it, and we're going to throw the SP1 here, place my Petrify, and we're just going to kill him with red numbers at this point. So, keep blocking the special attacks, we gain more power, and we heal a lot of it back. And it's also my only anti-venom fight, so as long as I don't die, I really don't care how much health I come out with. So yeah, um, he's just ticking down. Don't really care if it goes fast. If I wanted to go fast, I'd be going for SP2s, but I just want this fight as safely as possible. So we're just going to let him kill himself. So uh, yeah, really easy. The only part that really was bad was when I dashed into his SP1 to try to get closer to him. And when... Uh, he took forever to throw an SP2, but it's okay. So, next up is Node 35 Maestro. Another fight that I was actually worried about, because this is a massive Maestro. And Claire is good for Maestro, but not great for Maestro. Um, the worst thing about this matchup is the fact that Maestro has an ability where he gains Neutronium whenever he prevents a debuff due to immunity. 
which is going to be both when uh, buff immunity catches his buffs or I inflict poison or incinerate. And I want to stay in the poison curse because I would like to power control him if I can help it. But um, that does mean that I do have to give him some extra neutronium sometimes. Maybe it would have been better to stay in a bleed curse. Either way, I did feel confident doing it this way. So we're just going to let him not throw special attacks, I decided. Until he gains the glancing um, passive. This is kind of just what we're going to do. And there's not much to it. I didn't want him throwing a lot of SP1s. That's why I stayed in poison curse and just decided to power control him the whole time. And we're going to take a bit of block damage because it's a 7 star rank 3 and probably with block pen stat focus. I don't really remember. Uh, it might not have been actually, but at the same time, you can see here, like he's, he's at 33 neutronium, but he also doesn't have any buffs because buff immunity handles all that. It's just right here when the problem ensues. And it's because uh, I have to deal with the fact that he is going to have the cosmic radiation and he is also going to be piercing my block whenever he throws a special attack, assuming I don't try and dex it, which I probably won't. So yeah, we just want to spam some heavies here, try to get him into the, uh, or outside of his, um, I don't, I don't know what this mode is called, where he goes passive, uh, he activates passives, but we just want to get him out of that. So we did, and now he's dead, so... Uh, I took a lot of damage in that fight, but also I didn't die, so that's what matters. Okay, now we have Gladiator on node 38. I was originally supposed to get a White Magneto pre-fight, but the White Magneto pre-fight was coming from a backup, and we couldn't send the backup too early, and I also needed to open someone else's fight uh, on the mini island before I went to sleep. So I decided to take it without the Wags pre-fight. I got the okay to do it, and I felt confident enough to where I figured I could do it anyway. So we're just going to uh, do that. And here is not, never mind, not here. Uh, there's going to be something very fun and interesting that you're going to see. But right now we're going to throw that SP2. We're going to knock him down to gain the fury and stuff. I don't really care if he triggers right back at it because I don't need my buff immunity. I don't need my debuffs. In fact, him, you know, being immune to my debuffs is kind of a good thing until I hit 20 clairvoyance charges. So that's cool. Uh, I go for a heavy there, knock him down, and here is where I'm going to make a big mistake. Um, there is a thing you can do with Gladiator where you punish his SP1 while he's unstoppable and he doesn't have the time to react because he's still stuck in the animation. Um, but I dashed into his special too early and I kind of just screwed myself over because he crit me with a 53k crit on the special one. If I had timed it right, I nullify the unstoppable and he's still in the SP1 animation and can't punish me. But I dashed in too early, so that was really bad. Um, luckily, he's about dead, and at this point, I'm like, okay, I'm not trying that again. I thought I had the timing right. I know I can get the timing right, uh, but I'm not going to try it again because I'm so low on health. And if he crits me again, I'm actually going to lose my mind. So we're just not going to let him do that. Uh, we're going to power control him more. Uh, he can't throw another special attack, Poison Curse is so OP, Power Control with Claire is so OP, he's gonna die. So, uh, mild heart attack from running into that SP1 at an awkward timing, luckily we're okay. So, okay, next up we have Node 44 Cersei, and this is a fight where I need to pick one curse and stay in it the whole fight, and just do not hit her in the other one and the curse I picked was poison because power control is OP. So that's what we're gonna stick in. We just want to bypass the incinerate phase early and farm my tactic prowess while she's in the incinerate phase. And then we're gonna start with the poison curse as soon as I change into it right here. And it doesn't matter if she has glancing because that's still going to, um, still gonna trigger the curse or the curse switch. Don't really need to worry about that. Um, I'm going to sometimes block, sometimes dex or SP1. Uh, I do need to be aware that it will go unblockable sometimes, assuming I don't have buff immunity and assuming I'm not close to her. But uh, incinerate curse or incinerate phase is active, so we just wanted to chill for a moment. And now that we're back in poison, we're just gonna keep spamming specials, uh, spamming special twos, keeping her under control. And the poison phase is active, but now it's gonna go away, so we want to chill for a moment. Be aware of when she throws a special attack, if I need to dex it or not. 
Or I could just let her be passive again, and she still doesn't throw the special attack. It's just like the Mephisto fight, where the AI is just not doing anything for me. So I'm just constantly baiting it out, and like, dude, just throw the freaking special, and now she has three of her indestructibles. Luckily, they go away really fast, but I also don't have any prowess for insurance later. Here I'm like, okay, I guess I'm going for an SP3 now. Get my prowess back, which is helpful, but like, dude, that was so annoying. So unnecessary that she had to hold the special that long. But whatever, we throw the SP3, we dump our clairvoyance charges, meaning we can gain some more of them and do a big SP3 because of consuming them. She's all the way down to 18%. And we're very topped up in health, so I'm not too worried here. We throw my SP2, and because of power backs, we were at the SP2, and then we're going to throw another one, and is it going to kill her? It does. So there we go. That fight um, was really easy. Um, I played it really well. It's just I did get a little nervous when she decided to once again not do anything, um, but it's okay. We have one more fight this war, and that's against a rank 3 Adam Warlock on node 47 which back when i started this tactic last season this fight was really hard for me and now it's just a complete joke because i know the power of claire and i know how to claire this fight that is literally just staying in poison curse and not letting adam do anything except here in this fight my game decides to lag so much and it's my phone i know it's my phone it's not the game um, because the lag feels different than when the game lags. And see, again, I missed a parry, and I'm like, I'm actually gonna start panicking because I, my phone is not having a good time. Um, and then I missed X the SP1. That one's on me. But I'm freaking out here because I've already lost so much health just because of my phone lagging. Sometimes it doesn't like it when I'm screen recording, and when it does that in war, it's an absolute worst. So, uh, okay, we're just chugging along. We're just chipping Adam down fast, uh, or not fast, but slow and steady. Um, we're keeping him power controlled, and you also shut off Adam's, um, you also shut off Adam's power gain when you power control, or power steal him for 12 seconds, so we're using that to our advantage. We're also using to our advantage the buff immunity, allowing us to not have to worry about him going unblockable with his SP1 because I can block his SP1 when the buff immunity is active. That means I do have to deal with 7-star block penetration being really annoying and me taking chip damage, but at the same time, it's more worth it than me trying to miss decks. Um, but he's dead, so it's okay. Um, so that is my five fight Claire War. Some of those fights were really scary uh, in theory and in practice, or in the fight, but I did really well. So that is eight Deathless Wars in a row for me. Um, so, Deathless Season is 11 wars away, I can't really say I'm gonna get it yet, but also, if I hit 12 wars in a row Deathless, I'm also, I'm almost gonna consider that a Deathless Season, because of, I've never had one, I've never came close to one, and, uh, I'd be really excited if I can work towards it. So, we did lose the war by one attack bonus, which is really, really disappointing, um, but also, it's okay, it's the first war, everyone's rusty, it happens we're going to kick butt in the next war. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like, hit the sub, all the YouTube things I'm obligated to tell you, and I will see you in the next one.